Hey friends, fans, and flippers, we're back with another piece. I'm Sarah with Art Furniture Flipping Adventure and we have a big old clock that's missing some glass. We're gonna be adding hardware cloth to it, making it a little bit country chic, and yeah, time for another flip. Let's go. I'm cleaning and wiping down every nook and cranny with my card cutter. As usual, I'll link all the products that I use throughout the video in the description, just in case you want to find them later. So I'm honestly not 100% sure of the color I wanted to go with this. I started out thinking I'd go like a medium blue, then I was like, ooh, what about green? What about black? What about white? And Right now, I have a can of Timeless Blue. It's one of the bare chalk paints, which is what I use the most. And I've actually mixed a little bit of the black that I have left over from my wardrobe in with it, just to make it a little deeper. And I'm probably gonna just test it and see if I like the color, because I also have that green, and I think that could be cool too. It's sometimes really hard to pick the right color, so. I'm going to test them out first before I decide. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? Let me know in the comments if you stick with this color or if you try a different one. I think I'm sticking with this one. I like it. I didn't have to prime today and I was thankful to be able to skip that stinky step. If you've been watching our videos over the past month since we started, you've probably noticed that I have a thing for blues. All blues, any blues, it's been a favorite color of mine since I was young. Do you find yourself drawn to a particular color? Let me know what it is. I kind of need to branch out a little bit. Oh yeah, I, I only needed two coats of paint on this project. All right, so I wanna to talk to you for a minute about hardware cloth. That's what we're gonna be using to fill in where we lost the broken glass out of. Uh, it's not cloth at all, it's a metal mesh, and it's, I'd say, a cousin to chicken wire. Chicken wire, though, I find is a little more snaggy, so this is just a square metal mesh. You can find it next to chicken wire in Home Depot or Lowe's or probably a tractor supply store. So I'm gonna be cutting it up to fit in my space. Because it's a square grid, it is really easy to to um to square up because you just you just follow the lines right so i'm going to be doing this i haven't decided whether i'm going to be doing the side panels as well i do have the glass for those so i'll probably try this first on the door and then i'll decide if i want it to be all the hardware cloth and i might also dry brush it some i haven't decided i'll when, i'll decide more when I get it in and when I can look at it. So if you're gonna work with this stuff or any metal really, you need to wear gloves. I have some bodyguard safety gear on and the last thing you wanna do is slice your hand while you're cutting metal. Because this thing had this special rubber piece that held the glass in, it has a great lip to be attaching our hardware cloth to. Now you're going to need some wire cutters to work with this stuff or I suppose there's probably other things to cut it with. Mine are pretty dull, so I'm gonna have to struggle a little bit.
I'm gonna first worry about the length and then I'm gonna worry about the width. This stuff has been wound pretty tight for quite a while, so you're gonna have to use some strength to convince it to go flat. Better to cut a little too much than a little too little because trimming is easy, adding on is impossible. All right, I finally got my wire dry fit in here and I just used the rubber backings to hold it in place for right now. I'm gonna have to go and get some smaller staples to secure it in places and I'll probably still put the rubber around the edge because that is a great way for me to make sure that nobody ever catches their clothes or finger or anything on it and it covers it up real nice so um, I'll have to run to the hardware store at some point today and get a more shallow staple because the long ones that I have right now I have a feeling they're just gonna shoot right through the frame so I want to make sure that I don't damage the piece while I'm trying to fit and secure this hardware cloth in. My husband just made me fresh biscuits and coffee. He's the best. If you find a man who can cook, grab him fast. <laughs> All right, let's talk wet distressing. Now you probably know about distressing with good old sandpaper, but you can also take a damp, but not dripping rag and wipe back the paint off the edges. I find I get a good control, plus there's no risk of removing the finish from the wood underneath. I've heard of people using wipes like diaper wipes and stuff like that as well, but those potentially could leave behind some residue of whatever's in them. So especially for dark colors, I go for just water. Next up is our top coat. Now on a dark color like this, it's easy to overwork your poly because you can see it so much more. But just wipe it on and move on. Obviously don't leave drips and puddles, but just let it do its thing. After I got my piece all put back together, I decided my wire was just a little too shiny for me. So I'm just lightly brushing some light gray paint onto it to dull it down a bit. All right, everyone, it's all finished and she's looking beautiful again. The blue color really looks pretty on her and the hardware cloth fix really did save me a lot of time and effort on trying to find a piece of glass that went in here. and it definitely makes it a little more unique. If you have a clock in your home that you want to redo, I can say that it's pretty easy to do and doesn't take a whole lot of time or paint and materials and it really can give it a good facelift. However, maybe check on and make sure your clock isn't worth a ton of money. Some old grandfather clocks can be worth a lot of money just on their own, so make sure you check your clock before you paint it. This one obviously wasn't worth anything, so I didn't have any qualms about painting it and turning it into a piece that someone's gonna love having in their home again. 
Numberwise, I actually bought this cloth for $12.50, and with the hardware cloth being about $7 for the roll, and all the materials that I put into it after that, I mean, we're definitely under $25 for this piece. So I'm pretty sure that we'll be able to sell it for a pretty good profit. I'm just gonna get it staged simply and take some pictures and we'll be good to post her. We listed the clock yesterday for $150 and we'll see if we can sell it for that. We did sell the wardrobe from a couple weeks ago and although I didn't get exactly what I wanted for it, it was just taking up way too much space in my garage and I was so happy to see it go. We also sold the little blue dry brush cabinet and made a good profit on that as well. So for the month of our May videos, we made $1,200. Now we actually made more in the month of May, but you're going to have to wait and see those flips coming soon to the channel. So make sure you're subscribed and we'll post on Wednesdays and Saturdays and we'll see you then. That's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.